Hey, let's finish this thing up. The bushings that go in this head are deteriorated and crappy. Um, I've got these polyurethane bushings. They're, they're actually for the MG, for the suspension in the MG. Um, they kind of fit. I'll need to take them down a little bit just so that they can get all the way in on both sides. I also need to uh, this spacer that goes on the rubber ones is too loose for here, so I'll need to make a new spacer. Um, I'm not too upset though because it gives me a chance to use the lathe uh, for something actually practical, and uh, and that makes me happy. So even if I could buy all this stuff, I wouldn't, um, just because I wouldn't get to use that lathe. Hopefully, uh, I don't know how polyurethane machines. I guess we're going to find out. I'll just use a really sharp tool, I think, and hopefully that'll do it. We'll find out. I don't think this camera does so well when it's super hot, and I haven't figured out how to film on the lathe yet, so I apologize for the out of focus. Basically what I'm doing is spinning up an arbor so I can push the polyurethane on and uh, get it to spin without moving too much. Um, it's cutting, so I'm happy about that. Then I'm just checking it uh, on the head, seeing if it fits in or not, and uh, taking off a little bit more here and there. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. All right, I got to make that same thing again. And now I'm just going to turn that arbor uh, down into the spacer. Ah, oh, damn it, just a little bit more. Now I'm uh, drilling out the inside of the spacer. This would be impossible without a lathe. I don't think you could possibly do it on a drill press. Uh, just slowly going up sizes of drills until this is the final drill and it's the exact right diameter. Alright, I've reached a point where it's time to put the engine on. And you know me, I've got, I've got treats for the engine. Um, I've got this Polini kit, the Team Gorelli Polini kit. Uh, it's nice. I mean, super nice. However, it's not made for this engine, so I'm going to do quite a bit of modifications on it to get this onto the engine and then get my new carb attached to it and my new head attached to it. So I'm starting to think before I do that what I might want to do, and I think it's prudent and smart, which is rare for me, <laughs> uh, is to Rebuild it stock at first. Go ahead and rebuild stock. Get it on the on the bike. Troubleshoot everything. Make sure my bottom end rebuild was good. You know, take it out for a ride. Tweak everything I have to tweak. Make sure it's running perfect. Then pull off the stock head and cylinder and carb and exhaust and everything else. Then put on my new Team Polini kit, uh, make all the mods I have to make, uh, reinstall it, and then I know that anything that's not working correctly is, is, is with the kit. So I can, I can limit my troubleshooting um, to the kit and the carb and the exhaust that I'm putting on. So. Although it's a bit anticlimactic and I'm probably not going to enjoy doing it as much, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it stock. I was originally going to kind of blow through this since it's not the final rebuild, but then I thought that probably somebody out there would find this useful who's rebuilding a stock Gorelli. So 
Anyway, put in the wrist bearing and oil up the gasket. Um, I put the piston in the cylinder first before attaching it because you don't, you can't get the clearance like you can on a Pook or a Tomos to squeeze those rings. So uh, it's best just to go ahead and do that on the bench and then put your wrist pin in and your wrist clips, wrist pin clips, I guess they're called. I'm not sure. Anyway, the head gasket on Gorelli's is just this metal ring. And then I'm putting on the stock head here, but entirely incorrectly. Let's see how long it takes me to figure that out. 11 foot pounds on the cylinder nuts is 132 inch pounds. I'm not even bothering to Loctite these because if everything goes right, it's only gonna be on there for a day or two. Yeah. Non-detergent regular motor oil is what you use in the transmission case of this engine. You can buy it at Walmart. Fill it up until it runs out the side. Here are my new bushings. You can tell how much I love them. Yeah, see how I lovingly put them in and then look at this precision fit. Look at it. <laughs> By the way, I still haven't figured out that that head's on backwards. Realization finally dawns in three, two, one. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. Look at this. That's dumb. Flip it around, stupid ass. So then I went ahead and flipped it around and Retorked those bolts. Uh, at least I didn't have to take it entirely off the bike. Now I can get that bolt in. Also went ahead and installed the uh, stock intake. This thing is tiny, by the way. I've done this for all the bikes that I've restored on film. I stamp a little something in there just in case 20 years from now somebody has this bike. They can identify it and, uh, and know it was this one. DFHS number six. Oh, did I make a huge mistake? Oh, shit. Oh, I did. I'm just gonna go for it. Shit! That was stupid! So the forks completely fill up that cavity, so there's no room to shove the rivet in. I mean, after the rivet's compressed, it'll be fine, but you gotta get, you know, a half inch of rivet in there before you compress it. Then I reinstall the forks and wipe my greasy fingerprints off of the gorgeous bike. All right, I'm reusing this wiring loom as much as possible. So I'm taking the time to clean it up and replace connections and uh, replace heat shrink where it needs it. Um, just get it looking good. I know I'm gonna have to modify it later when we start messing with the stator, but for now I just like it to be, um, you know, reasonably good shape. Also, I had to rebuild the switches. N neither of them worked. Um, so I got in there, I resoldered the connections, and then there's a little ball bearing and a spring that makes that connection as you flip the switch. And uh, I, they were missing, but I found springs and ball bearings in my junk drawer that actually worked perfectly. That's what you get for not throwing anything away ever. I think you'll notice as we go through the build and the modifications that uh, wherever possible I'm using stuff that was made in Italy. Uh, Italian bikes should have Italian parts on it. Um, I use hand sanitizer to put these grips on. Hand sanitizer is great. It evaporates quickly and I think it leaves it a little sticky too so you know after three or four minutes those things aren't going anywhere. Then, as always, I spent way too much time running cables and 
It's embarrassing how much time I spend thinking about that and doing it. You're only seeing the doing it. You didn't see the planning part of the running of the cables and the wiring loom. Uh, yeah, I get, I get OCD when I'm doing these. Then I'm putting on the stock stator. Uh, there are mods for this when, when we get to it, but right now I'm just building it uh, stock. Uh, I did mark the case and the stator before I pulled it out. Uh, so I knew exactly where to set the timing when I put it back in. Uh, although I did have to end up adjusting this timing. So I don't know what I did. But I put it back on where I had the marks. And then I run the wiring harness, keeping it as close to the frame as possible. And then I, uh, I'm doing the grounds here. I always grind off paint and get nice, fresh, bare metal wherever I'm doing grounds. I think probably 90% of any wiring issues are caused by loose or faulty grounds. I also make sure that my grounding wires are real solid and brand new connections on them just to make sure it's looking good and won't fail. All right, got my grounds all done. Now I gotta do this connection block. As always, dielectric grease on all the connections. You future you will thank you for doing it now. Wiring is done. Now I gotta shove it all into here. <laughs> Manky old horn. Less manky old horn. Manky old headlight. Less manky old headlight. I've got plans for this headlight bucket that you will see in the next episode. And here I'm just sealing off the hole for the old oil injector. I lost about an hour of footage of me cleaning this chain and putting it on. It's probably a good thing. And here I'm spending 20 or 30 minutes straightening out the wheel and tightening up nuts. Now I need to remove some of the bolts uh, that hold in the side covers. They hold in three other things, of course, in typical Gorelli fashion. Then screwing everything back in. She's almost ready. Now I'm going to take a moment to rebuild the Delorto carb. Um, you've seen this if you watched the Tomos episodes. I rebuilt the Delorto uh, SHA in that one. This is a 1412, which is tiny, and it's the reason I'm, I'm not using it on this bike. But I will put it back on when we do this little stock run. Um, I'd also like to take this moment to wish everybody a Happy New Year's and Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and Happy Festivus, whichever... Uh, holiday you celebrate. I hope it was fantastic and you got to hang out with family and friends. Um, I'm also on the uh, Moped Discord server. Uh, the link is in the description. I'm at DFHS if you want to go on there and chat with me about anything. I, uh, I check it pretty much daily. And I always appreciate the comments on these videos and I try to read and respond to pretty much every single one of them. So uh, uh, keep those coming. Anyway, um, car rebuild is done. Uh, looking pretty. It's time to go back on the bike. The best thing about using a stock carb is that the throttle cable will plug right in, which is rarely the case on my bikes. I love it. 
It's usually about this point of the build where I'm putting on the pet cock and running fuel line that I start getting anxious about that first start. And uh, this time is no different. It's running through my head constantly. I bought these pedals on eBay. Uh, nothing really to recommend them except uh, they said they were made in Italy, so I bought them. <laughs> This is uh, the seat, and uh, I painted it up on the bottom with some rust reformer. It's in pretty good shape. It was missing some stitching. But other than that, in pretty darn good shape. Here's where that stitching was missing, and my lovely wife replaced it for me with dark green stitching, no less. I think all I have left to do is to um, hook up the brakes. Hook up the brakes. Is that really all I got? The brakes and the exhaust? Yeah. Holy crap, that thing came together. Oh, I've got a bunch of nuts to tighten. I I've been leaving stuff a little loose, and then I'm gonna come back and put some, um, put some Loctite on it, just to make sure it's in there good. Um, these, everything on the front forks, a couple other things. I'm gonna go do that right now.